In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. Why does God do what He does? Why does He not always do what we want Him to? You can't explain all of that. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He has a perspective from heaven's vantage point that we do not have. Even in the miracles of Jesus, why does he perform miracles at certain times and not others, and with some people and not all? Because God has a great work he's doing in this world. He's not just putting on a good show. No, no, he's trying to reveal himself to us. Remember, the great message of the miracles, Christ is enough. We've come today to Luke chapter number 5, uh, to one of the early miracles of our Lord Jesus in his ministry. Interestingly enough, almost like bookends on our Lord's life and especially his relationship with the disciples, you have a very similar occurrence at the beginning of his ministry and at the end of his ministry. Now, the first one is here in Luke chapter 5. The last one is literally after the resurrection when he's revealing himself to his disciples, and both of them involve a miraculous catch of fish in a way that is beyond the ordinary, uh, that even experienced fishermen like Peter uh, could not produce, could not do. No, only the one who made the fish and commands the seas could control this. Here's the story in Luke chapter 5. The Bible says he'd been teaching, sitting in a ship, uh, teaching, and he entered into one of the ships, Luke chapter 5 verse 3, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. I love that expression, launch out into the deep. You know, when you get out of your comfort zone, when you get away from the shore, uh, when you get out where the fish are, that's where you see uh, the, the great catch. When you get in deep water, are you in deep water today? Are you in difficulty today? Wonderful. That's where God will prove himself. That's where God does his deepest work in our lives because that's where God's power is seen. The Bible says in verse 5, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw to the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And I ask again, why does the Lord choose to do what he does and the way he does it? Well, permit me to give three ideas that come from this story that may give a little answer to that question. The first is this, that Jesus is always working to reveal his power. He wants us to know how weak we are and how strong he is. We are nothing Christ is everything. Remember, Peter, James, and John, they, they had this fishing business. They were professional fishermen. They knew what they were doing, and on top of that, they had already worked at it all night long. And it was at that moment that our Lord demonstrated his power. Remember, a little later, he's going to stand up on the bow of that ship, a ship, and say, Peace be still, and they'll be wowed by the fact that the winds and the waves obey him. Well, here the fish obey him. Everything obeys him. Why? Because he's God. We need a fresh glimpse of the power of our great God. It is not about what we know. It is not about how hard we work. It is not about how much toil uh, we have put into something or how much experience we have under our belt. It is all about this. What can God do? And I love that Peter said, Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. I don't think there was a whole lot of faith here, but there was a little faith. Now, he didn't let down nets, plural, like Jesus said. He let down a net, singular, singular. 
<laughs> but he did obey. And there's a constant reoccurrence of the word of Jesus connected to the miracles of Christ. I love that. His word and his works are woven together. Uh, if you want to see the miraculous power of God, then you must believe God's word, and you must obey God's word. The power is connected to the word. And for the record, he always does much more than you even think because now they've got to get other ships to come, and now both the ships are starting to sink. The Lord always does exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or even think according to his power, Ephesians 3 verse 20, that works in us. Why does the Lord choose to do what he does? Well, first, to reveal his power. Second, to give us a new perspective. Did you ever notice that as soon as they get to land, as soon as Simon Peter can get to Jesus, he falls down at Jesus' knees, Luke chapter 5 and verse 8, and says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now, wait a minute. A moment ago, he had all the answers. Now he acknowledges that Jesus is Lord and he is not. A moment ago, he, he thought he really was something, but now I am a sinful man, O Lord. You see, Jesus wasn't trying to give Peter a new perspective on fishing. Jesus was trying to give Peter a new perspective on who Christ was and who he was. It's an amazing thing. I said to you that in the miracles, God is always revealing himself. That's true. But the closer you get to God, God also reveals something else. He reveals you to you. And frankly, sometimes that is very painful. The nearer you get to Jesus, the more sinful you recognize yourself to be. It's not necessarily that you're getting more sinful. You're just seeing yourself now like Christ has always seen you. Now, this is the confession we all need to make today. Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man. Oh, but I love this. He said to the Lord, Lord, depart from me. But the Lord was, in fact, going to do the exact opposite. He was going to draw Peter nearer to himself than he'd ever been. This was not the end of their relationship. This was the beginning of it. And so we come to the third reason why Jesus does what he does. First was to reveal his power. Second was to give Peter a new perspective. And third was to finally show his great purpose. What was Christ's great purpose? Christ's great purpose uh, was not simply to perform a miracle or to teach Peter how to be a different kind of fisherman. No, in verse number 10, he says, From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. Jesus was not after a bunch of fish. Jesus was after the fishermen. <laughs> Jesus wasn't after uh, these boys in the boat. Jesus was after these men to yield themselves to be followers of Christ and fishers of men. That's God's great purpose. God doesn't work in our lives uh, simply so that we will be happy and content or we can enjoy watching him work. He works in our lives to bring us nearer to himself and then calls us to fulfill his purpose with our lives. I don't know why God is doing all that he's doing right now in the world. I don't know why he's doing what he's doing in your circumstance or situation, why he's allowed certain things, or why he is, is working in somebody else differently than he is you. But I know this. He wants this for all of us. He wants you to know he is all-powerful. He wants you to have a new perspective on him and yourself, and he wants you to come to understand more deeply his great purpose for your whole life. You see, this was an event but Christ had more than an event for Peter and the rest of these disciples. He had quite a journey before them. Don't just seek an event. Don't just seek relief. Seek Christ and his divine purpose for your life. I'll tell you what you'll learn. You'll learn that on the land or in the sea, on the shore or in the deep, Christ is always enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the Miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you're making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough. <laughs>